What's poppin' guys? It's Matt and we are back with a Galaxy S9 Plus review, the super slow-mo feature on this phone, which is pretty incredible, 960 frames a second, but it's a little tricky to use and you're about to find out why. So my first attempts at using the super slow-mo feature were total fails and uh, I didn't even shoot in wide mode, I shot in portrait mode here and you can see I was indoors and it's super super dark. Um, any regular indoor lighting I found is going to be super dark on the uh, super slow-mo feature. Now these I shot at work. Now compared this to me shooting with the Mavic at my job at the same place with the same lighting. You can see here, the Mavic's terrible at low light, but it captures perfectly here because the light's bright enough. But with the super slow-mo feature, it's horrible. It looks terrible. So you're gonna need bright light, that's the first thing. Now lucky for me, it's officially spring, but we just got hit with this crazy snowstorm blizzard got like 10 inches of snow here and i thought it'd be a great opportunity to go out and test it in the bright light and so i took my kids outside to play in the snow and turned on that super slow-mo feature and here's what i got So those shots turned out fantastic compared to the indoor low light shots. And so I decided to see what it would take to get some good indoor shots. How much light do I really need? And so I opened my blinds up on a bright sunny day here, the snow still on the ground. And then I turned on my studio lights right here and got this bright light shining down on me. And I decided to do some tests right here in the studio. shots turned out pretty good uh, indoors with the bright light really helped a lot um, I got some great outdoor shots now I got some great indoor shots now but getting all of these was not that simple and the reason is is because you're not shooting a continuously 960 frame a second you know for as long as you want and then you can tell it in post when to slow down or slow it down later um, you actually have to tell it while you're filming when to slow down and it's gonna shoot that 960 frames a second for about a second and the reason is because if you shot continuously in that mode, it would just be a giant file just after a couple minutes. And so you don't want that anyway, but the way it's set up, it's a little tricky. And here's how you do it. So when you go into super slow-mo mode, you're gonna see you have a square on the screen, which means you're in auto, in the auto mode, and you can move the square around anywhere you want it, and you can make it different sizes and bigger and smaller. And what you're doing is telling it when you see movement inside this square, when something quickly moves inside this square, that's when you want it to slow down. That's the moment you want it to uh, do the super slow-mo when it hits the square. Now, if 
you switch into manual mode, you're actually going to hit record and you're going to tell it when to slow down by hitting this button above the record button. And this can be a little tricky, but if you're doing continuous motion, I guess it ain't that bad. But I was able to get it here on the first try, so it can be done uh, getting some quick action uh, hitting that button. You just kind of got to practice with it to get the timing just right. Now a couple things I've noticed here, when you go into slow-mo mode, you can see here it crops in and you're not able to zoom in or out at all when you're in slow-mo mode. So keep that in mind when you're framing up your shots. And the second thing is you're going to want to keep your phone really steady when you're doing this in auto mode with the square on the screen because the square will see movement from you moving the camera around and will trigger the slow-mo when it, you, know, you don't want to because of the movement. So I used a tripod with mine when I was outdoors with the girls. But honestly, that didn't really help much because of the snowflakes, uh, the snowflakes falling everywhere was just constant motion. And uh, getting all these shots was really difficult because it was triggering in auto mode constantly just from the movement of the snow falling. And I was actually lucky to get most of these shots with the timing right. And even some of these indoor shots were a little tricky and I had a few failed attempts, like especially with this coin spin shot I did. It took a few tries to get the timing just right, to trigger it right at the right time, and that coin to go right into the square. It was a little tricky. So there you guys have it, the Galaxy S9 Plus super slow-mo feature, what's great about it, what's not so great about it, and what you gotta do to get some cool footage from it. Now, if you're already doing this because you've got this phone, show me, let me know. I wanna see what you guys are doing with it and some cool shots and give me some ideas too. So let me know. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this because I'm gonna have some more S9 reviews coming up soon and we'll see you guys all then. Peace.